welcome to the day or night sleep right awareness raising session produced by North Yorkshire and City of York Safeguarding Children Partnerships. The aim of the session is to increase your knowledge and understanding of the factors that can increase the risks of sudden and expected death in infants. With this increased knowledge, you will be able to identify situations which may lead to unsafe sleep practice and consider what you can do to support families to reduce the risks. You may have heard of the term cot death or sudden infant death syndrome. The term sudden unexpected death in infancy is now the preferred term to describe the death of a child that was not anticipated as a significant possibility 24 hours before the death or where there was a similarly unexpected collapse leading to or precipitating the events that led to the death. SUDI refers to all unexpected deaths of infants up to the age of one year. The sudden and unexpected death of an infant is one of the most devastating tragedies that could happen to any family. The impact is far reaching, both within the family, including siblings and extended family members, but also into the community and for the professionals working with the family. Here is a short video which describes one family's experience. The extended video can be found on the Lullaby Trust website. My name is Louise Barrett and I'm, I'm here to tell you about my son Ellis who died when he was just four days old. I'd had a, a normal pregnancy and a fairly normal birth. We uh, decided to take our baby home on the Friday. We were first time parents. We just looked at him and said to each other, we made him. In the night he woke up um, wanting a feed and so I, I took him from the pram that he was in um, and, fe and started feeding him. I was so tired because I was a first time mum, I'd never done all of this and obviously I'd just had a baby a few days ago so I was absolutely shattered and I, and I fell asleep whilst I was feeding him. I woke up and uh, my first instinct was to touch his head. Um, and of it was freezing cold and that's when I knew there was something wrong. Um, I called for my husband and he called for the ambulance and I started on mouth to mouth resuscitation. We got to the hospital and the, um, we were shown to the family room where you know you're just going to get bad news and when the doctor came into the family room I could see it, it was written all over his face. He didn't need to say anything and I said to him He's dead, and he just nodded. This graph demonstrates the effectiveness of the public health campaign in the 1980s and 1990s in reducing the incidence of SUDI. Those messages were largely focused on safe sleep positions for infants, reducing the risks of infants getting too hot and avoiding passive smoking. Sadly, despite the dramatic reduction in SUDIs over this period of time, the number of deaths has now plateaued and we continue to see, on average, over 300 infants still dying each year across England and Wales. In July 2020, a report published by the National Safeguarding Children Practice Review Panel. This report was entitled Out of Routine, a review of SUDIs in families where the children are considered to be at risk of significant harm. This report described the outcome of a thematic review of 40 cases of SUDI reported to the panel during 2018 and 19. These cases involve families where there were existing safeguarding concerns, with most infants and their siblings being subject to child protection plans at the time of the infant's death. The panel acknowledges that the risk factors for SUDI are well recognised and the steps parents can take to reduce the risks have formed part of clear, consistent and evidence-based safe sleep messages for years. 
The panel go on to say that in spite of this, it is apparent that while the safe sleep messages may be rigorously delivered by health professionals, many of those families who are most at risk are either unwilling or unable to receive and act on those lessons for a multitude of reasons. Critically, the report concludes that these tragic deaths occur more frequently in families that are particularly vulnerable, with many of the risk factors associated with SUDI overlapping with those of, for child abuse and neglect. The National Panel Report strongly advocates that safeguarding partners should view SUDI through a safeguarding lens, not just through public health perspectives. This useful diagram aims to describe SUDI in the context of the continuum of risk. The panel advocates that the support messages and interventions for families with increased vulnerabilities should be tailored to individual need on the known risk factors within the family. In 2020, the North Yorkshire and York Child Death Overview Panel identified that over the preceding two to three years, there had been an increased number of SUDIs where unsafe sleep practice was found to be a significant modifiable factor. A subsequent audit of SUDI cases that had been reviewed in the previous five years identified that co-sleeping, tobacco and alcohol misuse at the time of the infant's last sleep were very common modifiable factors. Sadly, between 2020 and 21, the North Yorkshire and City of York Safeguarding Children Partnerships undertook three safeguarding reviews involving infants known to have died as a result of SUDI. In all three cases, unsafe sleep practice was a significant concern, with domestic abuse, substance misuse and unsafe core sleep sleeping or unsafe sleep positions being key factors in these cases. So I will response. North Yorkshire and York CDOP led a multi-agency audit which confirmed that health providers across North Yorkshire and York are delivering research-based safe sleep messages to all families during the antenatal and postnatal period. However, these messages were almost exclusively being delivered by health professionals, with colleagues from wider partner agencies sharing they did not feel they had the knowledge and skills to reinforce those messages. Additionally, reducing the risks of SUDI was very rarely part of multi-agency safeguarding plans for families with infants under the age of one year. A report was submitted to the City of York and North Yorkshire Safeguarding Executive describing the findings from the CDOT review, the National Panel Report and the learning from local views. Both executives agreed that SUDI prevention needs to be seen in the context of the safeguarding continuum. And more work was required across multi-agency partnerships to ensure the most vulnerable families received enhanced support and interventions. The partnerships agreed to adopt a prevent and protect model to ensure that all relevant agencies and practitioners have the necessary knowledge and skills to work with families where there is increased risk of SUDI. This message from Professor Peter Fleming is clear. It's vital that professionals understand safe infant sleeping arrangements and give families accurate evidence-based information. He goes on to say that almost all parents fall asleep whilst feeding a baby at night. So even if they do not intend to bed share, parents should be advised how to make their bed safe for their baby if they fall asleep unintentionally. We'll now move on to consider what parental risk factors increase the risk of SUDI, which infants are most at risk, what aspects of the infant's environment can increase the risk of SUDI, and the situational risks or out of routine circumstances that can lead to increased risk. So firstly, considering parental risk factors. It's important to explore with both parents and alternative carers any identified parental factors that can increase the risk of SUDI and how they can be supported to minimise these risks. There is a vast body of research which concludes that smoking both in the antenatal period and passive smoking in the home environment 
significantly increases the risks of SUDI. Scientific evidence shows that 30% of SUDIs could be avoided if mothers didn't smoke when they were pregnant. Taken together with the risks of smoking around a baby at home, this means that it's thought that smoking is linked to over 60% of SUDIs. Alcohol or illegal substance misuse by the mother during pregnancy or use by either parent or carer after the child's birth are also known to lead to increased risks of SUDI. Excessive tiredness, use of prescribed medications that increase drowsiness or parental mental health issues may also lead to unsafe sleep practice as parents may be less attuned to the safety needs of their infant. Risks for individual children. As we have already described, infants under the age of one year are most at risk of SUDI. However, safe sleep practice should still be advocated in older children dependent on their developmental stage and the presence of other risk factors. Research into SUDI has concluded that male infants are most at risk. The reason for this remains unclear. We also know that premature infants and those with low birth weights are at increased risk. These factors can be li linked to the parental be behaviours described earlier. It's important to sensitively discuss with parents of premature and low birth weight infants the increased vulnerabilities. It may be helpful to signpost them to support that's available from the Lullaby Trust website, which provides specific advice for parents on reducing risk of SUDI in premature infants. Babies who breastfed appear to be at re reduced risk of SUDI. This is thought in part to be linked to the increased frequency of feeding. Critically, adopting a safe sleep position for an infant is fundamental to reducing the risks of SUDI. Infants should always be placed on their backs to sleep, not on their tummy or on their side. There is substantial evidence from all around the world to show that sleeping a baby on their back at the beginning of every sleep significantly reduces the risk. One major UK study found that the risk of SUDI deaths for infants placed on their tummy was over six times the risk for those placed on their back. As the infant becomes more mobile, for example, they start to roll over onto their side, the most important factor is ensuring the sleep environment is safe. We know that infants who are unwell, particularly if this is associated with a high temperature, this can increase the risk of SUDI. So it's important to support families to identify when their infant is unwell and how to access medical advice and support. Again, the Lullaby Trust has a very useful app for parents to help them to determine when their child is unwell and when to seek help. Thinking about environmental risk factors. It's important to consider where a baby will be sleeping both during the day and at night. The sleep environment should be kept clear as possible, ensuring any toys etc do not clutter the sleep space. The use of duvets, cot bumpers, pillows and anything that may swaddle the baby's head should be actively discouraged. Discourage core sleeping with young children or with family pets and with parents where there are any risk factors discussed earlier in the presentation. The sofa is one of the most dangerous places to fall asleep with an infant. Sleeping on a sofa or in an armchair with your baby is one of the most high risk situations for them. One study has found that approximately one sixth of the infants in England and Wales who died as a result of SUDI were found sleeping with an adult on a sofa. Car seats should only be used for transportation as they can result in the baby's head being tilted forward and impacts on their breathing. The temperature of the environment in which the child is sleeping should also be considered, ensuring that it's not too hot or too cold. If there are any concerns regarding the home environment, such as overcrowding, chaotic sleeping arrangements or neglectful home conditions, it's important to consider if this will adversely affect 
the safe sleeping arrangements for the child. Situational risks and out of routine circumstances can act together to increase the risks of SUDI and may mean that families find it particularly difficult or impossible to engage in safe sleep practice. It's useful to explore with the parents what they will do about safe sleep if the family's circumstances change, perhaps by sensitively posing scenarios for them to consider. How can they make sure their infant is still safe regardless of the changing routine or situational risks? So what can you do to support families to minimise the risks? It is important to work with families to identify and respond to the risks of SUDI in a dynamic and responsive way, not just as a one-off tick box exercise. Circumstances change within families and it's critical that professionals reflect on what these changes mean in terms of risk and vulnerability, which includes the risk and vulnerability to SUDI. Research is clear that if we provide a list of do's and don'ts, parents will often select the ones which are easily achieved rather than address the risks more holistically. It's helpful to use motivational interview techniques to understand the parent's perspective. So to understand what are the barriers to them following safe sleep advice and how can you support them to address these barriers. Risks associated with SUDI must be included in any assessment processes. For example, when using signs of safety or the graded care profile assessment tools. If the assessment identifies increased risk of SUDI, this must be reflected in any single or multi-agency plans. It is the responsibility of all those working with the family to address this aspect of the plan. Use the resources available to you to enhance your knowledge, increase your competence and your confidence in order that you can offer effective support to families. Seek advice and support from your safeguarding lead if you believe there is an increased risk of SUDI and your interventions with the family are proving ineffective. This was a brief overview of the factors known to increase the risk of SUDI. For more information and useful guidance and tips on how to explore these sensitive areas with families, please refer to the multi-agency guidance available on both Safeguard and Partnership websites. There are also national resources for families and for professionals. The Lullaby and Basis website are two particularly good websites for providing clear, evidence-based information to both parents and to families. This slide shows you how to access the resources on the North Yorkshire Safeguarding Children Partnership website and City of York Partnership website. Thank you for listening. Uh, our thanks go to the North Yorkshire and York Child Death Review Panel and to the North Yorkshire and York Safeguarding Children Partnership Safe Sleep Task and Finish Group. If you have any additional questions with regards to reducing the risk of SUDI, please don't hesitate to contact your safeguarding lead within your organisation.